This program is brought to you by PennyMac TPO. Visit tpo.pennymac.com to learn more about becoming a partner and starting your journey to greatness. With the people, products, and technology to take you there, it's why they say at PennyMac, greatness lives here. Welcome to The Interest. I'm Mike Savino. Many economists expected to see inflation cool, and that would be good news with the Federal Reserve scheduled to resume meetings again next week. But today, we got more of a mixed bag. The Consumer Price Index was up by a tenth of a percent in August over the prior month. That's after being flat in July, but on an annual basis, inflation fell to 8.3 percent. That's down two tenths of a point from the prior month. So let's take a look at what's driving these inflation numbers. You can see right here, food prices are still up 11.5% from last year. Consumers are getting some relief with gas prices. Fuel is now up 24% from a year ago, but that's a huge drop from where it's been in recent months. So why is inflation sticking so high? All other items are up 6.3% from a year ago. Let's take a look at what's driving that. We have transportation costs up more than 11% from a year ago, medical about five and a half. And here's the big driver, housing costs up 6.3% from where they were just 12 months ago. Economists say the increases in food and housing costs alone make up a third of that CPI increase. In fact, experts think housing prices could continue to put upward pressure on inflation. Yeah, I think housing is gonna continue to be a problem. I think. for a lot of people, the reality of uh, housing unaffordability in terms of purchasing a home has really set in. And I think that we're seeing a movement among more people into, into rental. The Federal Reserve is set to resume meeting again a week from today, and many experts think the Open Market Committee will raise rates again by 75 basis points. But what will happen to mortgage rates, which have gone back up in recent weeks? Well, one expert tells us that the spike is lenders resetting their expectations which could mean rates continue to tick up a bit. Stuck. I think what we're seeing, honestly, in the mortgage markets is basically a Fisher effect here where um, the, the market had a, a, a much lower expect, expectation of inflation than I think the Fed did. And then and we've seen expectations catching up over the last month or so. More bad news for consumers as lenders continue to tighten their standards. According to the MBA, its Mortgage Credit Availability Index standards fell by a half a percent to 108.3. The MBA also notes that some lenders are reducing their offerings of ARMS and non-QM loans. With overall origination volume expected to shrink in 2022, some lenders continue to streamline their operations by dropping certain programs to simplify their offerings. One bright note, home equity continues to be high overall some lenders are looking to HELOCs to offset the reduced offerings. Coming up, what to do when a potential business partner or new hire just ups and vanishes. Don't miss the largest regional mortgage show in the nation. The New England Mortgage Expo returns to Mohegan Sun in Connecticut, January 12th and 13th. See us at www.nemortgageexpo.com. Start your year with the best connections in the industry. Dozens of sessions, scores of exhibitors. It's where success is written every hour. www.nemortgageexpo.com Welcome back. We're approaching Halloween season, which means the ghosts are going to be coming out again. But what happens when they show up in your professional life? In this installment of Ask an Expert, we find out what to do when someone you're doing business with disappears without a trace. The conversation just stops and you don't really know why. You were the most interesting person in the world one minute, and then suddenly the communication stops. It's been happening in the dating world for some time, but ghosting has crept its way into the professional world. Where you either go to an event or you set a call with a company in the industry and out of the blue, the person just stops returning your calls or your emails or any sort of communication, even though you feel like you've really hit it off. One minute you're there and the next you're gone. But we're definitely finding that folks are employing this technique a lot more, I would say, post-pandemic as a way to disengage from folks in the industry. But how do you know if you've been ghosted? Maybe a person's email box is just really full. LaCentra recommends that if you tried email the first time, maybe try a phone call for the second attempt. Say that if you're in the position where you've been professionally ghosted, 
I wouldn't take it personally. Um, I would definitely set a timeline for yourself when you're engaging in these partnerships. But I think it's one of those things where you really can't take it too personally. Just know that this is unfortunately happening now in the professional world. What should you do if you get ghosted? Definitely don't badmouth the person for doing that. Um, and chances are, they probably have done the same thing to someone else in the community or in the industry. For more advice, read LaCentra's column in this month's National Mortgage Professional magazine at nationalmortgageprofessional.com. For the Mortgage News Network, I'm Christine Stewart. Thanks, Christine. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. This program was brought to you by PennyMac TPO. Visit tpo.pennymac.com to learn more about becoming a partner and starting your journey to greatness. For more on these and all of today's top stories, go to mortgagenewsnetwork.com.